Yes, we thank him, don't we? Yes, we do. Hey, it's good to be here. Welcome, church. Welcome into the house of the Lord. I've got some things to tell you this morning before we even do any greeting or anything like that. I just want to introduce to you our, our worship team members. One of them is absent this morning. That's Helen. She's unwell. But this is Daniil, yeah? This is Pamela, and this is Gabby. Why am I doing this, you ask? Because some of you may think, these guys ought to cut a record. They ought to, they ought to record a CD. They ought to do something like that. Well, Gabby and three other young ladies have. <laughs> Gabby is part of a group called Beloved, and on uh, Saturday the 16th of July, just a couple of weeks away, at uh, Warnborough Community Church, 6.30 to 9, uh, will be the release of their very first CD. It's an a cappella group for girls, and Gabby's one of them, and it's called The Beginning. And if you want to know more about that, you talk to any of these ladies after this service. They're going to tell you more about that. And you might just want to say, I want to get in on the action and be there for the release of that CD. Isn't that cool? Hey? <laughs> Come on, yeah. <laughs> Citizens, your vote yesterday? Yeah, I see sad remarks on Facebook that the polling booth you went to, you never got a sausage. And you were so sad. I see that all over Facebook. I never got a sausage at my polling booth. And, and you know, and the whole nation knows, it's all about the sausage. <laughs> well, today you don't have to miss out because we got the sausage right here and you don't even have to vote to get one. All right, come on. Yeah. Now's the time to move around, greet as many people as you can in the house of the Lord and welcome people for coming today. Please be seated, church. Well, a lot going on in the life of the church, I've got to say. I just want to remind us of some of those things before we kind of get going this morning. There's one of them that would be Brave coming up in October, ladies. Don't miss that. Alpha coming up on the... 26th of July, don't miss that, or don't miss on getting someone here. By the way, by the way, Alpha is an international organisation now, and uh, so people look on their website to see where they can... Uh, people look on that website, the Alpha, they think, I think I need some God stuff in my life, I haven't got any. And they go on that website and they find out if there's an Alpha course about to be run in their area, and they find us. And we get an email from Alpha saying, so-and-so, here's their details, would like a call from you because they'd like to join your Alpha group. All right? That's already happened with us. People we, people we don't even know yet, you know, and they're going to come here and sit in this auditorium and watch Alpha on our screens, plural, yeah, and, uh, and we're going to engage with them, those of us who are part of Alpha. Not all of you are going to be part of Alpha. Some of you want to continue with the group you're in and do the I Believe. Some of you say, I'm going to do both. Well, this is Tuesday night, my group meets on a Wednesday, so I'm going to do both, some of you are thinking. Well, that's all right too. But we really want the people who don't yet come to church to come to church, yeah? So work with us on that. That's going to be fantastic. Lots of important things going on. Don't forget Camp Sunshine in January, and we've got these last week. We're needing people, volunteers, to make all of that happen. That would be fantastic. Tithely. Tithely, yeah, that tithely is coming. I'd say about three weeks will be live. I've already got the app, yeah? I can give straight to our church. Just take this iPhone out, find where the app is. There it is. Bam. Now I can give. Done. All done. Right there. Or I can do it before I got here or after I leave. I can go down the dome and have a coffee after I leave and do it. Give my tithe. Yeah? That easy. Like about three heartbeats and you've given. How easy is that? Don't have to carry cash in your pocket and get mugged on the way to church. All in there. I think it's so cool. Guys, we had the privilege as uh, Australians yesterday to vote, and we don't know the result yet. 
I hope you didn't stay up too late last night waiting for the result, waiting, waiting, waiting. There, someone's going to get across the line and someone isn't. Well, lots of people didn't get across the line, individuals, uh, but the answer won't be known until Tuesday. But see, you've already leaned in by voting and I trust you voted wisely. Uh, you, you, most, a lot of people go, I don't like any of them. So I'm going to do a donkey vote. Well, you would be a donkey if you did that. So you, you don't want to, you've got to vote because you'll get what you deserve if you don't, yeah? Uh, so I want to lean in again to that and pray. Pray for wisdom, pray for a good outcome, pray that God will be honoured, yeah? I'm always looking for God-honouring stuff. You know, I'm, I'm looking for decisions from our government that will honour God. Uh, and I know some people say, well, it's, it's, it's all about the benefits I can get and it's all about the finances I can get. Well, maybe it's all about honouring God. Father in heaven, we look to you. The voting's been done and we don't know what the answer is, but you do. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, whatever it is, that uh, your name will be honoured and glorified. Praying, Father, that uh, you've asked us to pray for the government. You've asked to pray for those who govern us, that we might live a life uh, that, 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 that is uh, free to preach your gospel and see people one into the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we're praying for that good outcome that will honour you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're doing a series on, uh, on uh, words, on what will I say, and uh, I just want to give you a couple of verses to introduce it again this morning. Uh, Proverbs 10.20 in the TLB, uh, when a good person speaks, he is worth listening to, but the words of fools are a dime a dozen. Yep, you, you know that. Proverbs 18.21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its Fruit, thank you. I paused there so you'd say fruit. We'll eat it. Fruit, yeah. Today's message is titled The Joker and the Flatterer. Uh, what well, two fascinating characters. They sound like something from a Batman movie, yeah? The Joker and the Riddler. Uh, the Joker and the Flatterer. And I put, of course, on our church Facebook page promoting this a week ago, or last Monday, and immediately some people said on Facebook and to me, I think you are speaking into the election. The joker and the flatterer. I mean, well, 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 no, not really, but you, you can figure that if you want to and make that application. Uh, often, the joker and the flatterer are the same person. Uh, they're the same guy. Uh, the, the flatterer will give you his uh, silky, smooth words to win you to himself and his cause under the guise of encouragement to you and your well-being. But just, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a lie. Uh, the Joker seeks also to win some people to himself uh, with his humour, but his humour is usually at the expense of at least one other person, the Joker and the Flatterer. Uh, his his humour will express itself in reckless words and speech. Reckless, reckless, reckless. And pretty well every, every, pretty well every week in the media, I, since I've been thinking about this series, but it's probably all the time, uh, uh, you will hear, you'll see and hear about a media personality, uh, a sports personality, uh, a political personality, uh, who, who through a poor choice of words uh, will have to give an apology or in some cases a fine needs to be paid. I don't know what you're talking about, Gordon. Well, I'm going to tell you. Uh, someone is going to end up in a bad light. It's on a weekly basis. Eddie Maguire, who wants to be a millionaire, he, he was in hot water because of words he used. Yeah. Think about that. The North Melbourne AFL football coach was in hot water because of the words that he used. Two Australian international tennis players in the last several days have been in hot water because of the words they have used. And then someone on the AFL footy show, one of the hosts, is now in hot water because of the words that he has used and Nissan are going to withdraw their sponsorship of that show. So the words that we use of the power of life and death, and I haven't even got started on the politicians with the words that they have used that have either put them somewhere in a good place or put them somewhere in a bad place, and it's like a gaff. And so when we think about reckless words, this is the person who just blurts out stuff 
without giving due consideration to the negative effects this could have on another individual. Reckless words, reckless words. And, and I think about it, you know what a reckless driver is, car driver, you, you know that. He drives too fast in the wet weather. Uh, the reckless person is the one who never exercises caution in spite of danger. Uh, the reckless person is irresponsible and mindless of danger. Uh, the reckless driver is fined and loses his license, and it's a good reason for that, because the reckless driver may incur injury on somebody else on the roads, or as you know, pretty well every week you find someone reckless driving, they plowed into somebody's house in the middle of the night, into your bedroom. By reckless driving, that's reckless driving. Well, reckless words are like that. Proverbs 12, 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords. Uh, I, I, it's a good thing that that verse, that's just the first part of that verse because the second part says the tongue of the wise brings healing, brings healing. The, the words of the reckless just pour out. And they, they don't care if they hurt anyone or not. Uh, but the words, the tongue of the wise brings healing. Fellow believers in Christ, see the current thing right now on your TV channels last night, fellow Australians, I want to make an announcement that we have won, but I can't because we haven't. Fellow believers, I want to say this morning, fellow believers in Christ, we need to be those with sensitive intentionality and well thought out words. We, 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 need to, we need to engage our brain, put it in gear before we cruise with our mouths yeah it's too easy to do the other one uh, the joker the joker when has the joke gone too far when, when does the joke cross the line and become an offense rather than something funny yeah. think about that proverbs uh, 26 18 and 19 like a madman uh, like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says, I was only joking, I was only joking. Sometimes we will tell a really, really good joke at somebody else's expense. Yeah. And I want to say, look, a, a little bit of jocularity and teasing is a good thing. Uh, if it wasn't, I, th I think about in our office, uh, Catherine's a good sport, yeah, with a little bit of jocularity and teasing, yeah. And I think about, we have certain individuals that come and visit our office. And we hear the front door go, because it's got an alarm, and it goes ding. We go out and there's nobody there, because the, the dude is a joker. He's like that. And when you come out, there's nobody here, and he pops up. Well, see, that's okay. That's okay. When does the jocularity and teasing cross the line because there is a line over which we too easily cross that makes our joking become something like a madman, a maniac, shooting flaming arrows of death. James 1.26, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. But I was only joking. I was just joking, that's all. Well, for you, it was a joke. It's kind of like you go, we're having fun, aren't we? And the other person said, well, you are at my expense. Well, it was only a joke. The other person who was the butt of the joke, they found it hurtful. Proverbs 13, 3. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Insensitive words. Proverbs 27, 14. <laughs> this is the joker. If, any, if, if anyone, uh, anyone loudly blesses their neighbor early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. I want my neighbor singing songs to me first thing in the morning. Lara goes to me first thing in the morning, how are you feeling? I go, I don't know yet. I need to add water before I have a shower before I know if I'm alive or not. And even after that, I need something to eat after that. Uh, I still haven't got it up right yet until I hit the dome and have a coffee, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm alive again. If anyone blesses their neighbor early in the morning, they might think it's a good thing, might even think it's funny, but it will be taken as a curse. Proverbs 25, 20. Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day or like vinegar poured on a wound is one who sings songs 
to a heavy heart, but I was only joking. Uh, we, we come to people who, who uh, have some kind of pain because some kind of grief that's going on relationally or something or other else like that. And I just want to say, your jokes and your glib answers don't help. And often we want to be the counselor to everyone. Oh, they're sad, so I'm going to be the counselor. Well, well, maybe you aren't, and maybe it's not your words that they're going to need anyway. Remember when my father died, and someone came to me and said, well, he had a good innings. Well, I wasn't ready to hear any of that. And I go, well, he didn't play cricket. You know. <laughs> and sometimes we just don't need any stuff like that. You, you want to... So I just need your presence. Just need you to be there and say nothing. Uh, Norma is a lady that was part of our Quinana campus and uh, we finished up in Quinana the, the, the Sunday before Easter, so in March. And only s several weeks prior to that, before we finished up, uh, Norma was uh, diagnosed with cancer and uh, uh, she was given a prognosis too and means that her lifespan uh, has been shortened. It, it, she doesn't have that much longer left. And we're finishing up, and she'd been part of that church prior to, we took, part of, prior to our ministry settling in there for years prior to that, and that, that was her life. And now that church is finished, and Normal actually lives in St. Ives in South Street, so it's quite a hall to get to Quinana, bigger hall to get to Baldiva. So uh, Norma and I sat down and talked about where she should go uh, following on from uh, our conclusion there in March. And, and, uh, and I, I knew that Bull Creek wasn't that far away, and the pastor of Bull Creek is Danny Marwick, who used to be our children's pastor here. He used to kind of uh, be the king of the children's ministry centre and then he became a senior pastor and he's at Bull Creek. So Norma and Pastor Danny and I, we collaborated on this and long story short, uh, Norma goes to Bull Creek. So I was thinking about it the other day, about a week or so ago, and I, I rang Norma and said, how are you doing? And, and Norma said, I'm okay. And I said, how's it going to Bull Creek? I think the answer would be good and favourable so I could tell Danny, uh, Norma thinks that you're doing a good ministry there. And she said, oh, no, it's good, it's good. She said, but I don't, I can't get to do much. And I think sometimes in church that's what people think, you know, because of their circumstances and you've all got different, I can't do much. I said to Norma, you know, it's not about what you do. It's not about what you say even. It's about your presence. It's about you being there. Sometimes your presence is, is what's needed rather than any words. Your very presence is a blessing to others. And so I want to say, listen up, jokers. You've got a lot of jokers around. We love your humor, but don't let your humor uh, become a sword and wound the person who is the butt of your jokes or wound the person who you want to give a cute word to. Uh, you may well say, I was only joking, but no one else is laughing. Value the other person's presence. The joker and the flatterer. The joker tries to win people uh, and his cause uh, at the expense of the other person who is the butt of his jokes. Uh, the flatterer uses silky smooth words under the guise of encouraging you and building you up. But really, really, here's what the flatterer is doing. Uh, in reality, the flatterer is trying to get you into his embrace and into his cause or her cause. That's the flatterer. They will use silky smooth words, and you'll probably like their words initially. And I just want to give you this morning uh, two Bible stories that uh, speak about the flatterer, because flattery is not helpful, it is always harmful. And, and, and so don't ever confuse flattery with positivity, encouragement, and your well-being. Don't, don't be confused by it. You say, well, I bet they're a nice person. They said nice things to me. I bet they did. They want to be there to themselves and their cause. There is the account in 2 Samuel 15 of King David's son Absalom who had fallen out with his dad, his father. He'd fallen out with King David. And, he, and Absalom thought he could run the kingdom better than his dad. And so Absalom short, sought, he, he did all he could to show up his dad and find fault with him and to undermine him. And when I read this story and think about this, I want to say, Absalom, my boy, you may be so gifted, and he was a handsome, gifted boy, but we're talking about King David here. And King David has the runs on the board. He'd been doing kingdom for a little while now, and in far as, as the Middle East was concerned, in his day, uh, Israel had risen up to prosperity, military might, and economic wealth like never before. 
under King David's leadership. So I, I, Absalom, my boy, I think, I think your dad David knows a little bit about this. And seriously, you have no runs on the board, even though you're gifted and handsome. But Absalom pressed forward in order to, order to win the hearts of the people away from his dad, King David, to himself. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm flying to Sydney and my wife. It's Hillsong Conference time, and this will be my 25th one in a row. As Pastor Brian Houston will say to people, I think Gordon's been to more Hillsong Conferences than I have. Well, that's not true, but I've been to quite a few, quarter of a century, that's quite a few. So when I first went to Hillsong, they didn't have their own building, and uh, uh, they were a church that wasn't much bigger than us, and now they're a worldwide phenomenon. But uh, one of the things I want to say is that when I first went there, uh, to a service, I was met at the door by a guy by the name of Serge. And every time I go, I will be seeing Serge on Tuesday morning, probably about 11 o'clock, I will see Serge, he'll shake my hand and say, welcome. And I go, good day, Serge, I've been seeing you for 20 odd years, now 25 years. Uh, he, he meets new people at the door, whether it's the conference or Sunday church. And, and he doesn't attract them to himself. He attracts them to Jesus to the kingdom of God, uh, to the local church, and to Pastor Brian, the senior pastor. And, and I think about that because he's the kind of guy you want on your church and on your team. You do not want an Absalom. Absalom was not attracting people to God. He was not attracting people to the kingdom of God. He was not attracting people to King David, who was heading up the kingdom. He was flattering people to attract them to himself. And I hope you never lose sight of this because you will, you, you, you will encounter flatterers in, in the life, in your faith ministry life in the church. 2 Samuel 15, 1 to 6. In the due course of time, Absalom provided himself with a chariot and horses and with 50 men to run ahead of him. What's going on here? You think about this. He would get up early and stand by the side of the road leading to the city gate. And whenever anyone came with a complaint to be placed before the king for a decision, Absalom would call out to him, What town are you from? And he would answer, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. And then Absalom would say to him, Look, your claims are valid and proper, but there is no representative of the king to hear you. And Absalom would add, If only I were appointed to judge in the land. We've just done eight weeks of electioneering. For poll, you say, you've heard it all before. But I'm applying it to the church because that's in the word of God. Uh, look, your claims are valid and proper, but there's no representative of the king to hear you. And Absalom would add, if only I were appointed judge in the land, then everyone who has a complaint or case would come to me and I would see that they receive justice. Also, whenever anyone approached him to bow down before him, Absalom would reach out his hand, take hold of him and kiss him. We did a seminar here a little while ago about door greeters and other things right here, right here, just a few weeks ago. And, and you know, not everyone wants a hug and a kiss from you. We had a guy here, he goes, I don't want anyone hugging me, ever. Probably his mum, maybe, but not the auntie or the grandma, and not want anyone here. And some of you are just huggers. You just, and, and, and here's the thing about hugging, by the way. You can give a hug or take a hug. And not everyone wants to give you their hug and you want to take one from them. This guy's all over them. Where's my verses gone? Back to my verses. Get that back up on my screen, those verses. Come on. You either give me an amen or put the... There we go. <laughs> take hold of him and kiss him. And Absalom behaved in this way toward all of the Israelites who came to the king asking for justice. And so he stole the hearts of the people of Israel. He's a flatterer. It's a classic case of flattery. This is it. Saying smooth, flattering words to people to win them to himself and to his cause. That's the flatterer. Well, let me give you another example. That's a pretty good one, isn't it? That deserves an amen. Come on, stick an amen. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's the one I was after. Wasn't it good? Yeah. The Apostle Paul had planted a church in Ephesus. Laura and I have been to Ephesus. Uh, the Apostle Paul had left that church to go to 
Greece and Macedonia to pick up a, an offering from all the churches in Greece and Macedonia, Philippi, Thessalonica, Athens and Corinth and so on. He was taking it to the impoverished believers in Jerusalem. So on his way back, on back east to Jerusalem, he thought, what do I need to do here is call in and see the leaders of the church in Ephesus. So he made arrangements, sent a note to them, and, and they came to the coast, to the port city of Miletus. And uh, the apostle came there to meet them, to give them his uh, final instructions and read about it in Acts chapter 20. Uh, verses 17 to 31. From my latest, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. And when they arrived, he said to them, you know how I've lived the whole time I was with you from the first day I came to the province of Asia. He says, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. And you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Well, I'll tell you what happened to him. Uh, he, he got arrested and he got sent to Rome, imprisoned. Uh, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you among whom I've gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. It's a farewell speech. Will ever see me again. Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves. And all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, be shepherds, he's talking to pastors here, be shepherds of the church of God which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. He says, even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order what? To draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Even from your own number. He's talking about flatterers. Men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after themselves. Sweet talking flatterers. Lead people to Jesus. Don't lead them to yourself. Sometimes people want to depend on leaders like me or other people in my staff room. I, I, you, you, lean into Jesus. You'll never get from me or any of the staff or any of the leaders, any of the connect group leaders, any of the board members what you'll get from Jesus. Only Jesus can give you these things. I don't want you to come and toward me thinking that I am the answer to all your stuff because I will let you down. I want to point you to Jesus, no partiality or flattery. I want to say a few things about flattery as we kind of get ready to land this. Ezekiel 12, 24, this is God speaking. For there'll be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. Apparently there had been a flattering divination. Someone gives a prophecy and the prophecy is, oh, you are so good. I believe you're going to be the next leader here. You, you've, got, you've got all that it takes. You are just the man or the woman of the moment. Flattering divinations. He said there'll be no more of that. Flattery and false visions and promises. Absalom in the gate to win the people of Israel from his father, King David. And thus he stole the hearts of the people. Because we are naive sometimes. People in the church at Ephesus using flattery to draw people to themselves, their own plans and purposes. Job chapter 32 verse 21, I will show no partiality nor will I flatter anyone. Make, make that your heartbeat. So don't confuse flattery with grace and encouragement. That's the problem. That's, we go, oh, they're so encouraging. 
this person has so much grace toward me. Don't confuse them. Don't confuse them. Psalm 36, verse 2. In their own eyes, they flatter themselves too much to detect or hate sin. Aren't I good? And now I'm so good I can't even see sin in my own life. Psalm uh, chapter 12, verse 3. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. I just want to declare that over this church. Proverbs 28, 23. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than the one who has a flattering tongue. After all, everyone sees through the flatterer after he's done all his damage. Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than the one who has a flattering tongue. Proverbs 29, verse 5. Those who flatter their neighbors are spreading nets for their feet. It's kind of like a trap. If you allow yourself to get sucked in uh, by the flattering words of the flatterer, you will be caught in a net of destruction. You will be trapped by that person. Romans 16, 18. For such people, writes the Apostle Paul, are not serving our Lord Christ, but they're serving their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they will deceive the minds of what kind of people? We need to be above that. 1 Thessalonians 2 5. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Thessalonica and he's talking about how we did our ministry with you. He said, You know, we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. I want to say as we wrap this message up this morning, don't confuse uh, flattery with encouragement and grace. And don't be a flatterer. You know, don't, don't be one of those. It's encouragement and grace. They're, they're two different things. I just want to. Spell that out a bit for you right now. Flattery has its design to draw people to the individual flatterer. I want you to be their best friend. Uh, encouragement and grace have as their design uh, to give the person to whom you are speaking an injection of courage and to draw them to Jesus for the abundant life that he offers for time and for eternity. Point people to Jesus. I think about this because as I look out on a congregation Sunday by Sunday, I think about this. How many people here today are needing encouragement? And, 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 and the answer is all of us. Uh, how, how many today are, are needing grace? And the answer is all of us. But not one of us is needing flattery. It'll rot your teeth, man. It'll rot the soles of your teeth. It, it, it'll, rot the, it'll just rot everything in you. Uh, not one of us is needing flattery and false promises, even if those smooth words make us feel good for a moment. We, 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 we're just not needing that. We are all needing the truth in love. We're all needing the truth in love. Sometimes the truth in love may have a bit of a sting in it, but it'll put you in a good place in the future. We are all needing encouragement in Christ Jesus. Uh, times may be tough, but in Christ, uh, he, he's got your back. And he's going to propel you forward. We're all needing his grace. God loves you so much. In spite of our wandering, in spite of our, our, our often derailment from the pathway that he wants us to walk on, uh, he, he loves us so much and he wants us back on track. He has paid the cost for our sin and our alienation through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And he calls us into a right relationship with him as we surrender all that we are and all that we have to Jesus. The fighter will say, you don't need to surrender. Jesus says, surrender to me. No flattery here. Encouragement and grace to begin a brand new life with Jesus. Jesus can give you what nobody else can. No human being can give it to you. However smooth their words may be. And this morning, here's my call. No flattery going on here. This is a call of encouragement and grace and a call to surrender. Turn your life all over to Jesus. Surrender your plans to him. The flatterer will go, your plans are so good. Jesus says, surrender them to me. Surrender your plans to, to Jesus. Surrender your all to him because grace and encouragement are found in Jesus. Father in heaven, want to be those who use our words wisely and we want to be those who wisely receive the words of others as we deal with them and father we want to be those who look to jesus take our cue from him 
We want to be those who direct others to Jesus. Take us and use us this day, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, church. Got a great song to sing, and let's give it heart and soul and voice this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for the resurrection, new life. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for going to the cross and the tomb, beating death. Now you give us new life. We want to be speakers of that new life. We don't want to mess around being jokers and flatterers. We want to speak words of wisdom about your gospel of salvation, about your gospel of a new way in Christ. Thank you, Father God. Pray for everyone in the house today, those who are struggling with issues. Father God, that they would know your empowerment, your direction, your wisdom, and that you would lift us above where we might have fallen to and put us in a good pathway, the pathway of Christ. Thank you, Father God, in his wonderful name. Amen, amen, amen. People, just before you move, just a few things I need to say to you. You've got a great service here tonight. We're starting a series tonight uh, called Decision Making. And you could wish that maybe you'd heard that one before you went to the polling booth uh, by the time we're done with it. But we, we, we will be voting again before the end of the year on a couple of counts, so uh, it's going to help you there, but just in your daily life. decision. So 6 o'clock tonight, love to see you here. Now, on, on the last Sunday of every month, we've gotten into the habit now of honouring the volunteer of the month. Well, that was last Sunday. But today, the first Sunday of the month, we're doing something similar to that, so you'll need to be in... Spies Cafe, because action is going to be in there, all right? We're going to be speaking into someone's life and honouring them today, so don't miss that. And, of course, Spies Cafe, right at the information desk. That's where you buy your coffee. That's where you buy your sausage. Raisin toast you don't have to buy. You get that on the way to the information desk. And while you're at the information desk, if you're going to be doing the series, I believe, in your connect group, and I believe you ought to, well, then you need to go and purchase the book. It's available there this morning. Be blessed. Have a fantastic day. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the cafe in a short while. Of course, we're going to bless someone.